Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to all participants at the International Scientific Conference on Applied Science and Technology, ICAST 2020. First and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the ICAST 2020 Organizing Committee. It is my honor and distinct privilege to be invited to share some of my research work with, it, with all of you. Today, I am going to talk on one of the most important techniques in material studies, including nanotechnology, namely X-ray diffraction. Specifically, I am going to explain on how this technique being used in thin film studies. Before we go further, let me introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Hafizuddin Haji Jumali, and I have had the honor of working as a faculty member at Department of Applied Physics, University Kebangsaan Malaysia for over 20 years now. For those of you who never been to Malaysia, you may ask where on earth University Kebangsaan Malaysia is. For your information, our university is about 35 kilometers from the heart of our capital city, Kuala Lumpur, and approximately 15 kilometers from Putrajaya. University Kebangsaan Malaysia is one of the five research universities in Malaysia and currently positioned at 160 in QS World University Ranking. There are more than 17,000 full-time students, with 15% of them are coming from all over the world. The two photos at the bottom right of the slide are the building for our department. Where the Ladies and gentlemen, now let us begin our actual business, X-ray. For those who are not familiar with material char characterization techniques, you may have few questions such as, what is X-ray? What are the attributes of X-ray? Why X-ray is so important for material studies? Dear friends and respected participants, for your information, X-ray is a form of high energy electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths in the range of 0.1 to 10 nanometers. It was discovered by a German scientist named William Rongen in the late 19th century. Generally, X-ray can be generated by an X-ray tube. In this tube, high energy electrons are accelerated towards a metal target anode. The bombardment of these electrons knock out orbital electron from the inner electron shell of the target atoms, destabilize the atoms, forcing electronic transition, and thus creating X-rays known as characteristic radiation. X-ray can also be created from the slowed down of the fast incident electrons as the result of scattering by the strong electric field near the nuclei. This X-ray is known as white radiation or bram strahlo Due to its short wavelength, X-ray has high penetration power. Thus, in principle, X-ray can penetrate most of the materials around us. Another main attribute of X-ray is X-ray cannot be bent, but it can be reflected. X-ray is very useful in material studies because it provides the important information on atomic arrangement as well as elemental constituents of the investigated material. Although X-ray has high penetration power, the interaction of X-rays with matter is more complex than simply passing through. 
In fact, some of the X-ray will be absorbed and some will be scattered. If neither process occurs, the X-ray will be transmitted through the material. When absorption occurs, the X-ray interacts with the material at the atomic level, causing fluorescence, which forms the basis of X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. The X-ray can also be scattered from the material. The scattering can occur either with the loss of energy or without, known as Compton and Rayleigh scattering respectively. The ratio between absorption, fluorescence, the two scatterings, as well as transmission depends on four main factors, namely sample thickness, density, elemental composition, and the X-ray energy. For thin film X-ray diffraction, an understanding on the absorption of X-ray, which is governed by Beer's law, is very helpful. How much X-ray can pass through a material generally depends on two main factors, namely the linear absorption coefficient, mu, and the thickness of the material, T. Linear absorption coefficient, aka linear attenuation coefficient, describes the, fa the fraction of X-ray being absorbed per unit thickness of the absorber. Its value depends on the elemental composition of the material. Elements with higher atomic number, Z, will have higher value of linear absorption coefficient. Linear absorption coefficient values for few compounds are shown in the slide. The dependency of linear absorption coefficient on atomic number is best presented by titania and ceria. It is obvious that the linear absorption coefficient for ceria is four times greater than titania. As a result, the ability of X-ray to penetrate the material is reduced. This slide displays a graph showing the variation of penetration depth as a function of two theta for three different compounds, namely silica, titania, and ceria. As you can see, at high two theta values, the X-ray penetrates deeper into silica, but its penetration is limited to about 0.1 micrometer in ceria. Typically, the thickness of thin film samples produced in the laboratory are a few hundreds of nanometers. Every day, more and more researchers are producing films with thickness of few nanometers. Hence, the information on penetration depth, which depends on linear absorption coefficient, is very useful for the X-ray diffraction measurement planning. As I mentioned earlier, X-ray has high penetration power. Therefore, in X-ray diffraction, incoming X-ray from high incident angle will penetrate deep inside the sample. This is the common scenario in powder X-ray diffraction. Unfortunately, for thin film sample, this situation will result in transmission of X-ray into the thin film support. Thus, the detected reflection signals not only carries information from the film, but it also includes the information from the support as schematically shown in the top left image. In worst scenario, the detected signal from the thin film is so weak, hence almost 100 reflected X-rays carries the information of the support. Dear friends and ICAST 2020 participants, 
There is another measurement technique in X-ray diffraction called detector scan or grazing incidence. This technique utilizes small incident angles for the incoming X-ray. Hence, wave penetration is limited. With careful setup, the interaction between X-ray and support can be avoided. And therefore, 100% refracted X-rays are coming from the film. It is important to note that due to low incidence angle, the X-ray beam will produce large footprint. Therefore, it is recommended to have large sample dimensions or to use knife edge to limit the illuminated area as shown in the following slide. In detector scan, the X-ray tube's position is fixed at low angle, usually between 0.05 and 3 degrees, depending on the film. On the opposite end, detector moves from 0.05 degree up to 120 degree. The red colored knife edge at the center is used to block some of the X-ray beam and thus shorten the X-ray footprint. To execute this technique of measurement, it is advisable to use parallel incoming X-ray beam. To convert the divergence X-ray beam into parallel beam, special parabolic mirror is required. Interestingly, the use of parallel X-ray beam geome geometry opens up different type of application, such as transmission mode, reflectometry, and high resolution X-ray diffraction. To conclude my presentation, now I am going to discuss briefly on how this technique was implemented in our research at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. I will present examples based on one-dimensional nanostructures, namely gold nanowires, zinc oxide nanorod, and nanoflakes. Let us begin with gold nanowires. How the nanowires were prepared? Let me explain briefly. Using sputtering technique, a thin layer of gold was deposited onto a silicon substrate. Then, the film was heated in a tube furnace in a flowing nitrogen gas. Finally, the film was characterized using field emission scanning electron microscope and X-ray diffraction technique. As you can see, the top right hand side FESEM images confirm the formation of nanowires, which are generally aligned along the direction of nitrogen flow. The figure at the bottom right hand side shows the observed X-ray diffractogram when we did X-ray diffraction measurement using conventional technique. Clearly, there is only one strong reflection detected, which was confirmed from the substrate. By comparison, there are several extremely weak reflections, which possibly from the nanowires. However, when we changed our measurement strategy from conventional powder X-ray diffraction to detector scan, a completely different diffractogram was observed. With right measurement planning, the observed diffractogram was successfully matched with the standard reference pattern for gold. Hence, it was confirmed that the nanowires are indeed gold nanowires. The second and my final example for today are two different nanostructures built from zinc oxide. The top FESEM images are for the nanorods, 
which were prepared using microwave assisted hydrothermal method. Clearly, the nanorods stabilized in hexagonal shape and grew vertically upwards. However, using the same technique, but with a thin layer of aluminium on top of the seed layer, standing nanoflakes with typical wall thickness of 20 nanometers was formed. Interestingly, if you look at the X-ray diffractogram for both samples, they look very similar. Their similarity carries very important message. XRB tells us about the crystallized size in specific direction and growth orientation, but it contains no information on dimensions or morphology of the particles. Dear colleagues, my advice to all of you, please be careful in interpreting your X-ray diffraction data. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable ICAST 2020 participant, I hope what I have shared with you today has inspired you on the best technique to execute X-ray diffraction measurement for thin film and nanostructured samples. I sincerely hope you walk away with more information about X-ray diffraction, especially thin film X-ray diffraction. Indeed, topics in thin film X-ray diffraction are quite broad. It includes reflectometry, and high-resolution X-ray diffraction. What I have shared today is just a small part of it. Finally, thank you for your lending me your ears and being such an attentive audience. Thank you to all ICAST 2020 committee members